I hope you enjoyed part one of our conversation with Phil Sims. And if you did, tell your friends about it. They can watch part one, and then they can also watch part two, like you're just about to do. Phil Sims part two. If you think part one was good, just wait till you catch up with part two. All right, so what 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 in your mind from when you played to even from the early stages of your broadcast career, what's been the biggest change in the NFL over that time frame? Well, I well, what's the biggest change in the NFL? There's so many. I think the biggest yeah. thing is just the style of play. I think the biggest thing is is the athletes, Dave. I mean, yeah. oh my God. I mean, it's just, it's it's really truly unbelievable. The, the the athleticism in the NFL has gone up so much over the last couple years. Yeah. Just simply, I would say, let's just take the last five years. It's just a whole different group of athletes at every position in the league. Now we got offensive linemen, you know. Oh, oh my gosh. Let's see. Oh, Marius Mims. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, let, let's get somebody that 6'7", six, 6'8". I, I don't know what the weight is. I maybe 340, I guess. I'm just guessing and all that, but still athletic enough to do what they have to do yeah. against maybe the biggest group of freaks in the NFL are DNs, yep. or pass rushers. Right. Because they're big, they're extremely mobile, they're fast as hell, and they love what they do. Let's just <laughs> hit that damn quarterback, man. And if they could have played at this at the level they are now, if they'd have played back when I was a quarterback, when you were a lineman, you just go, oh my gosh, because it's changed so much. Mm -hmm. and they could really do damage because back then you could hit the quarterback all you wanted. I don't, I'm I'm being serious. I don't even know if there was such a thing as roughing the passer. I don't <laughs> remember when it came about. Yeah. I mean, when you played, did you guys have actually have calls where it was roughing the passer? I, I I can probably, in the 10 years in the NFL that I played, I can probably count on less than one hand roughing the pass for penalties that were called. Yeah. 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 It just, it just, it was fend for yourself. Yeah. yeah. I actually saw an old game of us in 1984 and it was on TV. I said, oh, let me watch it. I said, oh, man, look at me. Holy shit. I actually moved around pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing that comes to you. <laughs> and, but I was playing, shot out there, man. <laughs> and I was playing the 49ers. And oh my God, I was flying through the air because they were hitting me and going to the ground and using their forearms and just smashing my head and getting up and pushing me down. And you know, my reaction was there was no reaction because that was just part of the game. Yeah. But it was really incredible. So I watched the whole damn thing after it started because I couldn't get over the first couple of drives. <laughs> Not one roughing the passer penalty. And it was ridiculous. Yeah. Too. That have been, I, I'm going to really say this. There would have been at least 15 of them in that game. Oh, and really? it never even, John Madden was doing the game. They never said anything. Oh, man, they're really roughing Sims up today. <laughs> right. It's just football, right? I mean, that's it. They that's never said it. So, that's what it was yeah. back then. But okay. yeah, I mean, I ask you, what's, you know, the, the skill of the players, it keeps going off the roof. The, you and yeah. I have already kind of talked about what the youth is doing. So it's just yeah. translating to upward. But to you, what's the biggest change? Just so no, I mean, I, I think that's the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, I, I look at uh, <laughs> I look at these freaks that, like you're talking about, and maybe there was one on a team, and right. now teams have like three or four. You know, it's oh, like yeah. everybody. I, it, it's just the sheer numbers. Um, it's, it, it's like, man, there were guys that back then, you know, could have – so few probably – could have made it as big an impact in today's football as they made back then because, I mean, the athleticism yeah. across the board is just so much. It's so much higher. It really is. I mean, it's it is it's crazy. Well, it's, we're seeing. Look at the wide receivers now. Yeah, people go. Well, what kind of skill group does this team have? I go. The, every team's got a skill group. I don't right. even. I don't even want to get into it. I said, you know what? What team doesn't have? what we call good skill. Okay, maybe they don't have three number one receivers. They got two, yep. but they got a tight end and a running back and this. And it's, 
you know, I think my son and I, Matt, we did this and he said something about skill groups. I said, Matt, everybody's got a good skill group. I, I don't even want to get into them. It's, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's unbelievable. And they're coming out in more than ever. I mean, you know, I work on the draft a lot, but mm -hmm. I look at the, make a list of each position and I had the receivers. And I said, well, I need to watch him. I need to watch him. And I went, holy. And I was like at 25, I said, oh, I'm cutting it off. I can't take it. You know, how many more receivers I got to watch? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, so it's that, it's changing the game. There's no doubt. It is. And, and you know, it, it sounds corny and everything, but, you know, you look at it and you say, you're going to have your favorites. But literally, I mean, with the with the amount of talent there is in the National Football League, everybody has some kind of a shot. You know, I mean, it's not it's not absurd to, with maybe a few exceptions. It's not absurd to think, you know, what if things go right? They can make a lot of noise here. It's it's what who do you think what are the handful of teams around the National Football League that have, have piqued your interest, what they've done in the draft and what they've done in free agency at this juncture? Is it too early for you? Still in the process of, of studying up all that. Yeah, it's a little early. I mean, I, I just I guess it comes down to the I just won't be shocked at whoever does jump out of the pack and yeah. catches us all by a surprise. I mean, you know, you know all the ones. Well, let's just go Green Bay. Okay, you know, I, I'm i not going to say his name. He goes, somebody was on ESPN and said, oh, if I could take one quarterback right now besides Patrick Mahomes, it would be Jordan Love. And I just go, okay, let me turn the channel. Because that's the damn dumbest thing you could say. I mean, come on. Come on. You're going to take Jordan Love over all these other freaks that are playing the position. Oh, yeah, I want Jordan Love over Josh Allen. I think that would make a huge difference. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah, Jordan Love surely over Lamar Jackson because he's no good. I mean, <laughs> oh, you wouldn't take – okay, if we're going to go for the future where they are now and how long, oh, you wouldn't want C.J. Stroud. I wouldn't even bring his name up because I don't think he had a very impressive year, and I don't see – well, whatever. You know, you got me. So it just – but that that's – but, yeah, Green Bay, though, young – and what they've really done is I, I pay attention to them quite a bit because people, Green Bay's got a a national following. Sure. It's the speed of their team. I mean, they've they've made one specific, I looked at one, they've only they've narrowed it down to one thing. They want fast dudes everywhere. And everybody does, but I mean they're going for the really fast dudes. Mm -hmm. And that group that can really separate themselves from in the NFL. They they've done it. That's just one team. Can't wait to see Detroit, how that manufactures itself. Can they fix their defense a little, which I think they have. Aaron Glenn's getting better and better as a defensive coordinator. Those are a couple of just – hey, can San Francisco be the same team this year? I don't – I you know, that, that's going to be interesting. I thought two years ago when Brock Purdy got hurt against Philadelphia, that was their best team. That team – to me, was going to win the Super Bowl if Brock right. Purdy didn't get hurt. That's just I agree. my opinion. I but, agree. And I, and I did see, even though they were in the Super Bowl and had many chances to win it, and we want to get into that, but that team wasn't, to my eyes, just wasn't physically as good as the year before. But they were still damn good. I mean, huh, hey, winning the Super Bowl, there you go. This, You think they're not going to sit back and think of about 8,000 reasons why they could have won that game? Yeah. No. And, uh, this will be something when you and I will talk about next year when the Super Bowl comes around. Oh, we just going to let them play free and do whatever you want. We won't call nothing. Right. right. I mean, right. the holding penalties in that game were so egregious, but they were not called. They yep. just, and I uh, don't you understand that? That as an official, you almost like go, I don't want to be part of the game. I don't know. So I don't know well, how he thought. Everybody but. watching. Everybody's watching. But them Namo linemen were doing some great holding. Uh, oh, I'm telling you, man. Once, they, once, once you get the uh, the idea that hey, man, it's liberal today. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. We're yeah. gonna we're gonna we're gonna push this. We're gonna push this to the uh, to the max. I mean, it's uh, it's crazy. Yes. I, I getting back to what you were talking about. I think yeah. um, from when we played to now. Not only the size, but you talked about the speed. Yeah. The, the team speed uh, it, at every position group now, as compared to, you know, back 20 plus years ago, is just 
30 plus years ago now. It's it's crazy. It is crazy. You have big body guys running like, you know, tight ends and wideouts ran for us. You know, it's like, what the hell, man? It's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, the Philadelphia Eagles went down and got the Georgia D lineman. Oh, he's 6'3", 275. Oh, he ran a 4'6", or 4'7". You just go. Uh, it, it is. It, it's, it really is crazy. I think truly – Two also, yeah, offensive linemen are getting more athletic and all, but right now we got them in the position where it's just their athletic ability and their size and all that. It's here, whatever, but the people they're trying to block have gone farther ahead than that. So it's becoming more and more difficult to say that all oh, this left tackle is going to take care of his guy every play. You know, it, it's just it's harder and harder. And now we're seeing D tackles that are humongous with great versatility, nimble, and moves and everything else, where they're becoming, I mean, come on, 350 pounds, when they go full speed right into you at the snap of the ball, I mean, I don't care how strong you are as an offensive lineman. You tell me, how do you not give ground and get in the face of the quarterback? Yeah, I mean, that that's that's a surge, man. That explosiveness, that surge is like, a tidal wave, bro. It's like it's hard to it's hard to work against. There's no question about it. It's it's a the game the game is uh it's amazing, man. It fascinates everybody. And I, well, it, yeah, and it's you know the NFL. You know, people always complain about this and that, and you know, of course, I'm around defensive players. They bitch and moan about everything, <laughs> and you know, it's. it's but they have to they, they, I say this to the fans out there, the NFL changes rules every year to try to keep the game because the fans want to see what? What if fans want they want to see scoring? Yep. They judge every game. Well, it was a great game. You know, 30, 28, whatever. Yeah. But you, you know, and I and I when I was announcing games, we would see the halftime report and I go, Well, they don't think it's exciting. It's seven to three, and it it's to me, it's exciting because I can feel the tension that's going to come into the game as it goes along. Sure. Low-scoring games, I think, at the end, man, I love to see the play calls, the players, because I think the tension and the scope of the game, they know it's on them. And, man, that makes people even more tight in, right. in sports. It's like you can't, can't – uh, you're only going to maybe have the ball two more times. You better do something with it right now, man. Yeah. You know, the one thing I too, and I, and I was always taught this, to, it just came to my mind you said that. Bill Parcells was, you know, everybody looks at him and goes, oh, he was just, a, no. Bill loved big plays, and he wanted to score and all that. And he was really into, let's get on top. I want to be, I, we got to, I don't care if it's three points or seven, let's score first. And I would talk to him about it sometimes. He goes, Sims, right away when you get behind, there's a tension to it. Now they're chasing. And the farther the game goes on when they're chasing, the more apt they are to make a mistake. And that will be the difference. And, you know, he was, I, I tell you, I don't, looking back at his career and coaching and decisions and managing games, ah, damn, Dave, he wasn't good at it. He was phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, that, boy, that's phenomenal. such a, that's such a sound thought process, man, you know? So we, we all got together. Yeah. Last week or two weeks ago, uh, the hundredth year, Tom Coughlin was there and Bill Parcells. Wow! So I was going to tell this story, but Tom Coughlin told it. We were really beat up going down to Washington to play. We had a good team. I'm going to say it was 1990, and um, the old line's a disaster. We got no, <laughs> we got no receivers. Everybody's hurt like no, like never before. So Parcells went into the offensive meeting. They got the board up on Tuesday, all that we were going to put in. He goes, nope, nope. And he just keeps <laughs> marking things out. Not doing this. And they get done. And literally we had nothing except quick throws, whatever. And Tom Coughlin is having a fit during the week. He's going, I don't know. What do you think? I don't think we can do. I don't know. How are we going to win? Which We just have no plays. <laughs> he was the wide receiver coach, of course. And because if it's up to Tom, you're going to have 500 plays in every. Right, right. Yeah. So we go down and play, and we are running like four, literally four or five plays in the past game, and we score like 35 points. Unbelievable. It was unbelievable. So the game is over, and Tom happens to be next to me, and we're walking across the field. 
and I'm not going to tell you exactly what he said. He turns to me, and goes, "He's a damn genius. He's a genius. I damn, I tell you, he's a genius." <laughs> Just, <laughs> and, and I, you know, I remember it like it was yesterday. And Tom Coughlin told that story in front of Bill and all that. Oh my God, we were crying, laughing. Just. And for Tom, just, you know, excuse Mr. Her. And all of a sudden he goes, he, he's a, you know, and I just, his, well, that was great. It was a great moment. And uh, just the two of them, too, to see him together, too, was awesome. They only get the Giants four Super Bowls, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah just four. It brings me a memory. Uh, Bill Walsh, offensive genius. Oh, yeah. Guru. And he was Paul Brown's offensive coordinator. My rookie year, I have Paul Brown as the head coach. Bill Walsh's offensive coordinator. I'm like, how good is this? Wow. <laughs> Mackerel. And uh, and Bill has got, you know, a bunch of plays. I mean, he he oh, couldn't okay. have enough plays. He's drawn them up. And Paul Brown says, you know, here, here are the plays of what you've got up there, Bill. Here are the plays we're going to run. He takes, like, five passes and four runs. And we run the heck out of them. And we run them out of different formations, different motions, different looks. But we're running those plays, man. Yeah. Yeah. We're attacking those spots, and it's like the same thing. You know, just whip them by, like, over 20, and Bill shaking his head, you know, just oh, the old man, he knows what he's doing. You know, <laughs> it, it, it really is incredible. Hey, you know, and, and I heard – I heard watched uh, Parcells being interviewed not long ago, and he goes, look, you know, we didn't have that many plays. He wasn't big into all those – let's just do what we do and be really damn good at it. Yeah. Our passing game was, of course, very simple, but it was explosive yep. because, you know, if I threw a check down on third and 10, well, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's open. Oh, you're just trying to pad your stats. You're worried about your stupid quarterback rating. I go, no. We, you know, we, we, I can't even, we'd go into, man, we'd just scream at each other. It was awesome. It, but uh, yeah, no, he'd get mad because he just wanted big plays. Can you draw up more big plays for me, coach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just they're easy to do. we are just but yeah, it was a different style. And I and, and I, I'm sorry we get into this Bill Parcel stuff, but boy, you talking about getting me mad. Yeah. Say to me that oh he couldn't coach today's kids. Tell me that, and I'll just I'll I'll tear you apart in the debate. Exactly, exactly. Name me a player. They they would all respond to Bill yes. Parcells. He was a friggin' He could just, what's the word for it, relate to anybody, and he knew how to, what to make that work. You know, he treated everybody differently, you know, that way. And yep. if he, he knew he could yell at you, he was going to yell at you because mm -hmm. he wanted to send the message to the rest of the guy. If he knew you were a little tender, he'd be very careful. He knew what to do with every player. He could mm -hmm. he could, he could, could get all everybody on his side. It was That was his greatest, I think, his greatest skill, which that's that's coaching, right? Yeah, it's coaching. That's leadership. There's no question, man. I mean, yeah, figure out everybody's personality, what buttons to push. I mean, there's a lot, a lot to that. Well, Phil, I'll tell you what. I've uh, I've well, monopolized a ton of your time, man, and you are outstanding no. as always. No, no, that was a that was a little walk down, you know, memory lane. <laughs> Nobody, people get tired of hearing that crap. You know, whatever. No, but, it's all good. But in two days, we're gonna go over the the Bengals draft picks. Sounds good. Right. Yeah. So we'll do that on Wednesday. I'm looking forward to that. We'll get we'll get into all of them. We'll talk about some. Well, my favorite guy is McKinley Jackson. That was my you <laughs> that's a big boy there. Yeah, you, now you listen, that's a run stopper. He didn't have to move, just stay there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's so a, he's but, a big old two gapper. Oh my God. I know. It's gonna be great though. It, it really is. And big you know. Lou Anarumo, we got to get him on and go, Lou, hey, we finally went out and drafted defensive players for you. Oh, no, it's it's all good. I'm looking forward to it and um, a lot of fun and going to be fun talking about all the draft picks the Bengals had. You're the man, Phil. Appreciate your time. Hey, Dave, always a pleasure. Thank you. Dave Lapham here, and every day I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.